clock maps. If you've seen our survival win streak series, where we got over 200 wins, you know the premise. Basically, we made a technique where any map, maps with complex callouts and maps with none can benefit from simple and effective ones. Convenience is the key here, as we are pretty lazy. It had to be simple enough for us to remember, but not so complex we had to study. Before I explain it though, let's get the petty excuses out of the way. Bro, come on, not having a second monitor isn't petty. You don't need one. Oh, well, I don't want to memorize all the maps. Don't need to. Okay, well, I can't open the files because I play on console. Doesn't matter. Okay, well, what the- Bro, okay, I'm completely blind in both eyes, man. Bro, you edit these videos. I man. In truth, the only downfall of clock maps is that to understand them, you need an explanation. There's no in-game tutorials or natural learning curves. Either someone teaches it to you or you don't know it. So, with that in mind, here's your lesson on clock maps. Again, you don't need a second monitor, good memorization or even a computer. It all starts with this single idea. 12 is at the top of a clock, so we put main on it. Then we put 6 opposite of 12 with 3 and 9 on the sides. Done. You can now guesstimate your position from anywhere and communication is a breeze. Some maps can't follow these rules, but here they are now and that's all there is to it. With the combination of these numbers and other simple callouts like Main, Bus and House of Pain, you can communicate anything you want. It also makes learning map layouts and RNG a hell of a lot easier. For example on Mother's Dwelling, while 6, 7 and 8 are very good looping spots, 9 and 10 will probably end up with you being dead. If you want to download the maps I use on stream, join the Discord and check the pinned messages in DBD Talk.